Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to continue our Chapter 10 notes. Today we're doing Section 10.3, Solids. So, uh, we generally talk about, we don't spend a lot of time with the definite shape, definite volume stuff. We talk about the types of solids, and there are generally two types of solids. Crystalline solids which are the type that have highly regular arrangements of their components. By component, I mean ions or molecules, typically. Um, examples would be table salt and pyrite. So I've uh, trotted out my sample of table salt with the little green and silver um, styrofoam balls many times. And then this one is kind of cool. It's a... Um, an electron micrograph of pyrite. Um, so we talked a little bit about uh, crystalline solids when we spoke about ionic compounds. Um, so this is just an extension of that, I guess. So when we talk about crystalline solids, we talk about this very regular arrangement of their particles. In this case, this would be uh, lithium chloride. And you'll uh, recall me pulling these models out and showing them to you when we talked about ionic compounds. So we talk about some sort of a lattice, um, and we talk about how many other particles, in this case ions, each ion is surrounded by. Um, and again, when we're talking about solids, depending on whether it's an element, in which case the particles would be atoms, if it was an ionic compound, the particles would be ions, as they are here. And if it was a molecular substance like water in its solid state, we would be talking about molecules. So when we talk about crystals, there are seven basic crystal units. Um, in general, if you go on to be a chemistry major, you will spend probably years of your life talking about the crystal structures. Just know that there are seven very basic crystal shapes that I'm showing you here. They are tetragonal, hexagonal, orthorhombic, trigonal, triclinic, monoclinic, and isometric or cubic. Um, and that's pretty much all we're going to hold you responsible for at this stage of the game. The other type of solid that we talk about is amorphous solids. The other types of solids, uh, plural, singular. Anyway, amorphous solids have considerable disorder in their structures. We think in terms of glasses and plastics. And as you can see here, there is a great deal of disorder in the uh, particles of an amorphous solid as opposed to a crystalline solid. And that results in changes in properties, changes in whether they have a very definite melting point or whether their melting point is kind of a slow transition from the solid to the liquid state um, in, the term, in terms of amorphous solids. That point at which they would flow would be referred to as a glass transition temperature. So... Um, that's pretty much all we're going to talk about with solids at the moment. So to summarize, substances that have very little intermolecular forces of attraction between their particles would exist as gases. Those substances with strong intermolecular forces of attraction between their particles exist as liquids. And those with very strong intermolecular or ionic attraction between their uh, particles exist as solids. So the force of attraction between the molecules rather than the bonding forces are what we're talking about in this chapter predominantly. And so these are the same intermolecular force of attraction that we talked about in the bonding chapter, which is, um, if memory serves me, chapter 6. So we referred to these intermolecular forces generally as van der Waals attractions, but we can break them down into three forces of attraction, the so-called dipole-dipole interactions, the hydrogen bonds, and whenever we mention hydrogen bonds, remember that hydrogen bonds occur between hydrogen and typically three other elements, NOF, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, and the London dispersion forces. So phase differences, solids 
have definite shape and uh, volume, and their particles are packed in fixed positions. The particles are not free to move and flow. However, there is always motion, and so we think of it in terms of vibration um, within the fixed points. Liquids have a definite volume with an indefinite shape. The particles are close together, but not fixed, so particles in liquids can move freely. That's what gives them their fluidity. And finally, uh, gases, no definite shape, no definite volume. Particles are, in general, at great distances from one another, and the particles move freely. So my summary slide for states of matter that we've talked about so far, solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. Solids, again, fixed positions, can only vibrate within those fixed positions. Liquids close together but can move freely of one another. Gases, particles are far apart, and our most energetic form would be plasma. So for today, this is all with Chapter 10, Section 3, Solids. This is Miss Augustine signing off.